Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So another day, another vlog here in sunny Sydney, Australia. The land down under. I always have to say that just because it sounds so catchy. Anyway, the Royal Enfield Himalayan versus the upcoming KTM Adventure 390. Now, in making this video, you guys have to realize one thing. I've ridden the Royal Enfield Himalayan, I've ridden the KTM Duke 390, but I've never ridden the KTM Adventure 390 because it hasn't been released yet. That motorcycle will be released next year. So knowing that, that it's going to be released next year, 2019, KTM have confirmed this. It's actually a really exciting moment because at the moment when you look at the small adventure bike market you've got the BMW G310GS which I've also had a good history with I've ridden that bike for a few days and the Royal Enfield Himalayan which I've ridden for a few months in the Himalayan mountains so if there's going to be anyone here in this YouTube world without being arrogant I think I'm a good candidate to compare these three motorcycles but in this video I'm just going to focus on the two the KTM Adventure 390 and the Royal Enfield Himalayan make sure you stick around until the end of the video because it may provide you with that helpful insight on whether you should wait around for the KTM Adventure 390 to be released and whether you should pull the trigger now on the Royal Enfield Himalayan so what do we have here? We've got two motorcycles, small adventure bikes, starting with the Royal Enfield Himalayan, 411cc single cylinder air-cooled engine that produces 24.5 horsepower at the rear wheel. And then on the other hand, you've got the KTM Adventure 390, a motorcycle that is basically going to take components from its brother, the KTM Duke 390. The engine is basically a 373cc single cylinder liquid cooled engine, it's fuel injected and it produces about 43 horsepower. Now that's some great horsepower and if they can tune that engine right to make the torque more available on the low end of the RPM spectrum, the KTM Adventure 390 will definitely dominate because as it stands, the Royal Enfield Himalayan produces about 32 Newton meters of torque at 4,250 RPMs. That's really low end inclined. So that means you've got a lot of torque straight off the bat, which is very handy when it comes to riding off-road. And then the KTM Duke 390, although it gives you a bit more, 38 Newton meters of torque at about 7,000 RPM so it's more high it's more high end inclined when it comes to the RPM spectrum there you basically got to rev it more to get more power but the great thing about the KTM Adventure 390 is it's got a six speed gearbox compared to the Royal Enfield's five speed so what this should mean is you can cruise on the highway much easier on that motorcycle so cruise on the highway much easier it will have a higher top speed. The Royal Enfield struggles to get up to 130 kilometers an hour. As you get into about 120, 125, it's really dragging it out on that motorbike. So, yeah. But then, what it will come down to? Obviously, the KTM Adventure 390 has a great company backing it. They're produced in India, just like the Royal Enfield, but they're produced by the company Bajaj in association with KTM. Whereas... Royal Enfield Himalayan is obviously produced by Royal Enfield. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Royal Enfield's done quite a good job so far. Uh, they had some reliability issues within the first two years of releasing the bike, which, you know, disappointed a lot of people. But they pulled through. They've updated the bike. They've revised it. They've now implemented fuel injection and ABS. And that has vastly improved the motorcycle and its performance. Anyway, now that we have all the specs aside, my experience on the Royal Enfield Himalayan was overall a very pleasant one. But that was mainly because I was using the bike for off-roading. I did a lot of off-roading on that bike and it tolerated all sorts of beating. But 
when it came to on-road performance, the Royal Enfield Himalayan really lacks. And that's kind of when you're on the highway on the Royal Enfield Himalayan, you're really wishing that you're on a higher displacement bike, something that had a bit more power or even a sixth gear. But the great thing about the KTM Adventure 390 that because it takes inspiration, design and components from the KTM Duke 390, which has really proven itself on long distance touring and as a street bike, it's great on road. It gets up to about 160, 170 kilometers an hour, no dramas. It's only a single cylinder, but just the way that KTM have designed that engine, you can just rev the crap out of it and get some decent power. Now, if they adopt that to the KTM Adventure 390, I imagine it's gonna have more low-end torque and therefore some sacrifices will have to be made with its top speed and its acceleration and all sorts of stuff. Because the torque will be more low-end inclined to be more of an off-road centered bike, what usually happens when you do that with a motorcycle engine is you sacrifice its performance on the high range when it comes to RPMs. So basically if you start revving that KTM Adventure 390, I imagine the torque curve will be like this straight up at the start and as you start getting into it, it'll start really reducing in torque as you start revving it. So obviously knowing that sacrifices have to be made, that's, that's no issue at all because I mean you can't have a perfect all-around bike that's good at everything, right? But the way that KTM has designed this Adventure 390, it's going to have a 19-inch tire on the front and a 17-inch on the rear. When you compare that to the Royal Enfield Himalayan, it kind of sucks because the Royal Enfield Himalayan's got the 21-inch on the front and the 17-inch on the rear, therefore giving it a higher ground clearance. Oh yeah, tunnels, I love tunnels. <gasps> Shit, <laughs> I just forgot. I'm in the break-in period on this motorcycle. I just revved it like above 8,000. I should have done that. It's, hard, it's seriously hard to breathe in this tunnel, man. You don't realize like how poorly vented these tunnels are until you're on a motorcycle. Like in the car, you don't experience it because you just chuck your air conditioner on, recycle, and you've got no dramas. But on this bike, man, kind of struggling to breathe in here, but I'll keep talking anyway. Alright, so overall, when it comes to the KTM Adventure 390, if KTM executes this well, which I imagine they will, I'm sure they've done all their research, they've done all their testing. As you can see from these spy shots, the bike has been spotted being tested around India. I'm sure they're testing it in other countries also. But the great thing about it is that the KTM Adventure 390 will have more power, it'll have more torque, it'll have a somewhat similar ground clearance, it'll have a low seat height, and when it comes to fuel mileage, the Royal Enfield Himalayan sits at 36 kilometers per liter, whereas the KTM Adventure 390 will be around 30 kilometers per liter at best because the KTM Duke 390 gets about 28 kilometers a liter. If I'm wrong, this is just what I've read. If I'm wrong, please correct me if you've tested it. And if you've tested the KTM Duke 390 and you think it's got better value, let me know. But overall, they're going to price the KTM Adventure 390 probably a bit more expensive than the Royal Enfield Himalayan. It's got dual channel ABS. It's got that nice colourful LCD screen. So just knowing that it's got all of those extra little perks and features, plus it's a KTM bike, I imagine it'll be priced a bit more expensive than the Royal Enfield Himalayan, but I mean... I definitely think it will be worth the money. So should you stick around and wait and invest in the KTM Adventure 390 as opposed to buying the Royal Enfield Himalayan now? I think so. If you're a patient person, I would wait around. 
And then, <coughs> worst case scenario, if you don't like the KTM Adventure 390, when it comes out, then simply don't buy it. And look at, look at different options. Anyway guys, thanks for tuning in, catch you guys later, peace.